the other career option that I think is actually really good for women who want to be stay-at-home moms or you know trad wives, whatever, whatever you want to call it. The really good option is entrepreneurship, surprisingly, and a very special kind of it. I don't mean go buy a McDonald's franchise and run that. I don't mean like Mary Kay. Stuff like, you know, the MLM marketing, like you have to be, basically you have to have a lot of rich friends if you want to do that. So that can be rough, but self-employment is an excellent option because when you are your own boss, you set your own hours. I've done self-employment. I have my own house cleaning business. I've had online businesses, you know, in today's world, where you can be a YouTuber or you can be, you know, an Instagrammer and you can have, you know, maybe you could, maybe you know something that is like a niche knowledge. Maybe you learned how to sew when you were a kid. That's a really good thing that that's a skill that is rare nowadays that you could monetize, you know, and you could monetize it online. A lot of women will do because here's the thing you want to set up some sort of entrepreneurial venture that is going to give you what's called passive income. Okay. It's a huge term and there is a ton of con artists on the internet talking about it. There is no true passive income, you know, unless you have a trust fund and you're just living off the interest, that's like the only true passive income, but having some sort of online business, I think is excellent for women who want to be stay at home mothers, because first of all, you set your own hours and is and if it's as like passive income as possible you know then it's also going to be stuff you want a, you want some sort of work some sort of online you know job that you're creating you know because when you're self-employed you're basically creating your own job and you have to be careful you don't get stuck in you know working a ton of hours because entrepreneurship will do that you know if you don't set up your business right you'll be working around the clock, you know? There's a really good book called The E-Myth Revisited. I forget the name of the author, but it's The E-Myth, E like entrepreneur. And he talks about how there is a difference between working on your business and working in your business. And he said, working on your business is you are creating systems to take yourself out of the equation so that you're not selling your hours for money, you know, just like you do in a regular job. The beauty of being an entrepreneur is you can set things up so that you are selling your expertise and you're doing it in some sort of automated way so that you don't have to necessarily be there hour by hour by hour every day in order to get paid. If you can work on your business and set up a system and then it'll pay you whether you're working or not, you know, you could be sitting on the beach and you would still get money come in. That's excellent because a lot of passive income is marketed toward people who they don't want to work or, you know, they don't like the nine to five. It's a lot of it is like hotshot young guys and they're going to sit there and be like, yeah, man, I want to go travel the world and blah, blah, blah. For us women, passive income is excellent because, hey, you're going to get paid whether you're working or you're on your back in the, you know, the hospital having a baby. And that's really good because our society has already moved toward a two income model for like families and stuff. A lot of women at this point are working because they have to work and getting to stay at home with your kids is becoming more and more of a luxury. And so in order to kind of help your husband like fill out that economic thing, problem. If you have some sort of like automated way to bring in some money, you have some sort of an online business that is set up with systems that, you know, you get paid without a whole lot of work on your part, you know, like active work. It takes work to set up the systems. This is why I say there's no true passive income stuff, but once you set up the systems, you can get money coming in. It's not going to be a lot. You're not going to be a millionaire unless you set it up well and you do it for years. I mean, you could depending on what you're doing, but yeah, you want to set up a system and then that way you can have money coming in with not a lot of effort. You know, you don't have to put in, maybe you'll work, you know, maybe 10 hours a week instead of 40 hours a week. And this is really good if you have kids or you want to have kids because then you're bringing in full-time income, but you're not having to work full-time and you're getting to be at home and you can set your own hours and you can work it around, you know, your children and things like that. And so you've worked a job and you hated it and you just, you, you can't understand why people do this and you really don't enjoy working for a paycheck, 
because not all of us do. You know, some of us like the structure, you know, we like the reliability because entrepreneurship is risky. But if you're the kind of person that you just know in your gut, you're like, oh, I really don't like this, but I'm not, I haven't found Mr. Right yet. I don't know what to do. Entrepreneurship could be a really good option for you. And as a woman, there's less of a like societal stigma for you to live at home with your family. And so if you could live at home with your family while you're building your business, that's really good. I've been involved in the online entrepreneur space for years. And one of the things I consistently notice that these like, you know, hotshot passive income people do that they kind of don't realize they're doing, but it was like a huge factor in their success is they will often get rid of their housing expenses. So they'll live with a friend and crash in their basement or the men will go home and live with their mom. And so I notice that there's often these situations, or the women, you know, if it's female entrepreneurs, you know, and she's like, woo, girl boss. If you dig a little deeper and you listen to her personal life story, she usually has a husband at home and he's paying the bills and then she's able to start her business. So again, you know, if you want to, again, there's nothing wrong with living with your parents. I think especially for us women, it's good to live with your parents because women are very family oriented. We're relationship oriented. It's not good for us to be isolated. It's good for men to be isolated. If you're a guy and you're watching and you're like lurking watching this, I know some of you do this. Okay. I know you're there. I see you. I see you. But if you're a guy watching this, my, my advice is the opposite. I think you should leave home, go get your own apartment, go live, you know, live on your own two feet. It's going to teach you, you know, masculinity. It's going to teach you problem solving. It's going to teach you to be a leader and that's going to be really healthy for you. But if you're a woman that all that like isolation and risk and trouble is actually going to force you to develop some very masculine sides to your character. And that isn't always gonna be good. It's gonna be a lot of stress for you when you already have to stress about finding men, evaluating them, you know, figuring out who you wanna marry, you know, going on dates because finding a good guy is really hard nowadays. There's a lot of crappy guys. It's not that you're an empath and you're attracting narcissists. It's that our pool to pick from just really sucks right now. And I know some of you may be going, oh, well, I'm religious. <laughs> I have I have a special pool that I get to pick from and I'm gonna have better options in it. No, it's affecting everybody. That's what I thought when I was younger. I thought, oh, well, <laughs> it's gonna be easy for me because I'm religious and I'm just going for the religious guys and they have morals and they're gonna be, they're gonna treat me better. And no, some of them didn't. So it was like, that was surprising. So just be careful of that. You know, it's going to take some time to find Mr. Right. And if you're spending all your time struggling to pay bills and, you know, get established in a new city where you don't know anybody, that was one of my mistakes in my twenties. I moved around a lot in my twenties. I'm an adventurous person. I'm not afraid to take risks. And I would just move to like, you know, I would have friends in, you know, I would know people usually. My most recent move was to Texas and I didn't know anybody there. But, you know, usually I would move somewhere where I knew people, you know, like I moved back to my college town and then I moved where I had a friend from college and I moved into the city where she was at. And so I would do that. But in hindsight, in retrospect, that took a lot of time and energy away from dating because I had to get reestablished in these new places and I didn't have family there and I couldn't, you know, crash at, you know, my aunt's house or something. So I had to start over from scratch every time I had to get a new job, I had to get an apartment, I had to learn, you know, the local culture, you know, because every state kind of has their own culture and their way of doing things. And that took time away from dating. And I do think that's a factor. I'm in my 30s, I'm getting married in my 30s, my mid 30s, and I really think that's part of why. There were other factors, but I think that was a big reason why I didn't find Mr. Right until my 30s. I spent a lot of time moving around and having to do the whole like, you know, career and independent woman thing. It was not my choice, you know? I had some unfortunate like family situation. I had a unfortunate family situation and that was the advice, you know, mentors and, and older adults, you know, who knew me, that was the advice I got and it was what I had to do. So there really wasn't any way to help it. But if you're a woman and you can live with your parents and they're okay with it, you know, they may ask you to pay like, 
you know, some token rent, maybe a hundred bucks a month or like groceries every, you know, every, every month or something, you know, chip in with the groceries, that's fine. But in general, if you can get the housing situation taken care of, if you have your family, your, your parents, or maybe there's an aunt and uncle that are fine with you living with them, then that is excellent if you want to do that and then build your business and give it about, because it takes a couple years for a business to be profitable and get off the ground. Until then, it's going to just feel like you're shoveling money into it and you're shoveling work into it month after month after month. And it, it takes a couple years to get off the ground. And that's why if you already have an apartment and bills, it can be very difficult, you know, in a full-time job to pay for that apartment. It can be very difficult to launch a business on the side. And for women, I don't recommend it. It's difficult even for men, but you know, men have more energy than us women. And, you know, we have a monthly cycle. Sometimes we lose our motivation, you know, and we're also trying to handle the social side of life, not just the economic side. And so as women, our energy is already going in multiple directions. You know, we have our full-time job. We're trying to keep a social life, you know, trying to keep in touch with our family, be a good daughter, be a good sister. So we're already kind of doing something on the side, you know, and unlike men. And so when, when we tell people, oh yeah, you can start a business on the side when you have a full-time job, it's incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. And so I don't recommend it for women. If you're a guy watching this, you got energy and focus and like, yeah, you, you do it because it's you're gonna grow and it'll be good for you. But if you're a woman, launching a business on the side can take away from some of you know, some of the other things you need to do. Because it's not just about dating. You have to take care of your health. You don't want to ruin your fertility by overwork. And then by the time you end up married, you have infertility issues because you're so exhausted and overworked, you know, that you end up married and it becomes difficult to have children. You don't want to end up in that situation either. So be very careful what you take on. And, you know, if you want to go the online business route, I think it's an excellent route for women that want to be stay at home moms. Passive income is like a godsend for you if you want to be a, pa a stay at home mom. And so, if you can get your housing costs covered somehow, you know, maybe, maybe at your church they need a housekeeper. And, you know, in exchange for you cleaning the rectory every week, you know, they're willing to give you housing at a very deeply discounted rate or something. You know, there's certain arrangements you can make, but if you're going to live alone, try to get some sort of arrangement where you live with a family member and maybe just pay them, you know, a hundred bucks rent or something. And otherwise, if you can live with your family, that's excellent and like launch a business, that would be great.